Hey growers, what's up? It's Lucas, and for a long time, I've dreamed of growing a successful pumpkin patch. In my early years of gardening, I tried to grow pumpkins in my backyard, but it was pretty shaded, and although the plants looked alright, I only got one pumpkin. It wasn't much, but I was hooked. Fast forward a couple years, and I tried to grow pumpkins in a community plot, and this was a complete failure. The plants were riddled with insect pests such as cucumber beetles and squash vine borers, and by the end of the season, the patch was just a big yellow mess. Several years later, I tried to grow pumpkins in my front yard because I knew it had more sun than any other area on my property, and that wasn't very successful either. Although the plants looked fairly healthy, they each only produced one measly pumpkin. So you can see, I haven't been very successful with my pumpkin growing endeavors, but this year on my half acre vegetable garden, things may just be turning around. So this area right here is my pumpkin patch. It's about 70 feet by 70 feet, and so far, it's actually doing pretty well. This row is a variety called Blanco. It's a white pumpkin, and the plants look pretty decent. They're really starting to grow now, and it's only a matter of time before they start sprawling out on the ground. This variety is called Cinnamon Girl PMR. It's a pie pumpkin, and it's supposed to be powdery mildew resistant. That's what the PMR stands for. So the vast majority of this pumpkin patch is your classic orange pumpkins that are great for carving into jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween. Just look at the size of that leaf. It's bigger than my hand already. This variety is called Knucklehead. It's a very unique variety that's orange and warty. A lot of these pumpkin plants are at the stage where flower buds are starting to form. Most of these flowers will be male, but a small percentage will be female. The male flowers are easily distinguishable, as they are held up by a slender stem, whereas the female flowers have a small fruit behind them. If bees come and pollinate, you'll have successful fruit set, and the pumpkin will start to grow. But if not, the small fruit will not be fertilized, and it will just shrivel and fall off. You can hand pollinate pumpkins, but I don't recommend it, especially if you've got a lot of plants like me. Let the bees do the work. That's what they were made for. So I've got one row of knuckleheads here, and another row here. And the reason I grew two rows of this variety is because it's supposed to be a really good seller, and hopefully I'll be able to turn these into some cash at the farmer's market. One of the unique things about some pumpkin varieties is that they tend to get this kind of white pattern on the leaves. Some gardeners might be afraid and think, oh no, my pumpkin plant has powdery mildew, which is a fungus that can kill your plants. This is not the case here though, because powdery mildew is not geometric like this, and also it's too early in the season for this to grow. It usually happens in mid to late August. You can see a lot of my Igor plants are actually looking pretty small, but there are some good ones as we go along the row, and I hope that all of them will start growing fast and producing tons of huge orange pumpkins. Less than two weeks later, you can see how much larger these pumpkin plants have gotten. This just highlights the insane growth potential of these plants. It's exponential, but there's no time to celebrate because we've got company, and it's not the kind you want over for dinner. Cucumber beetles have begun to raid the pumpkins. Decorated with yellow and black stripes, these insects have an appetite for leaves, and if I don't take swift action, they will destroy my crop. Most plants look fine, but the row of Cinnamon Girl PMR is getting hit very hard. They've started to lay eggs, and they may not have gone to math class, but they sure are trying to multiply, and that's a huge negative. On July 2nd, I decided to take action. The grass and weeds between the rows was getting out of control, so I took the lawnmower to the farm to clear the path for my pumpkins. I was very careful not to shred the leaves and vines, so I had to use some shears to complete the job. I also dusted the plants with some white powder called diatomaceous earth to control the cucumber beetles. This is not 100% effective, but hopefully it'll keep populations down until I find a better solution. Overall, the plants look healthy, and they're really starting to flower. This is a good sign that it's only a matter of time until pumpkins start to form. Some plants have also reached the stage where they're starting to vine out. Some pumpkin varieties grow in more of a bush habit, while others will sprawl out and cover the ground like it's nobody's business. I got my hands on some insecticide, so it was time to put on the PPE. I don't like the idea of using chemicals, but it was either go to war with the beetles or surrender my pumpkins. 
This particular pesticide is called Matador, which is commonly used by farmers to defend their crop. I poured 25 milliliters in 2 gallons of water, mixed it up, pressurized the tank, and entered the battlefield. These pumpkin plants are hungry, and although I fed them near the beginning of the season, I needed to give them another dose of fertilizer to keep them thriving. I mixed 50 milliliters of 31818 soluble fertilizer in the 2 gallon pump sprayer and misted the leaves. This is called foliar feeding, because believe it or not, plants can apparently absorb nutrients effectively through their leaves. So that is my pumpkin patch so far. We'll see in time if it makes me proud, but so far, so good. Don't want to jinx it, fingers crossed. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to see more vegetable gardening videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Lucas, and I'll see you next time.